And Hello. here we are. Let me. That's a blast from the past since last September. Right? It's been a long, long time. Uh, For this catechesis, you're just going to tell us everything you did. Oh, wait. Oh. Maybe a different time. We can do that at a <laughs> different time. I think we have two, uh, two important things to talk about today. More important than my, as I put it, long, boring vacation. <laughs> Um, so today we want to talk about coming back to Mass uh, under the direction of the bishops of Colorado who have uh, told us that as of Pentecost, that's May 23rd, correct? Is that around there? Uh, we are, they are um, lifting the dispensation that we had because of the pandemic. And the other thing we're going to talk about is uh, moving priests around, or why the church does that, or just some elements around that. So, have uh, at any other time there been reasons why someone that, or people that would be physically capable to go to Mass um, have been dispensed from going to Mass? Yes, right? I mean, think of the persecutions in Rome. If I would be able to go to Mass, but what if I was caught and killed? Um, and, and there were persecutions not just in Rome, but in, in many other countries throughout the centuries. And for many other reasons, this has happened before. And uh, it was very prudent, of course, you know, from the church to, to grant this dispensation during the time of the pandemic. But as time goes on, the vaccine is distributed to now people of all ages, or basically. Um, and, and, you know, between the next, within the next uh, 40 days, because it's 40-something uh, days, 40, about 42 days till Pentecost, it, it, we will get there. And, you know, if someone doesn't get it, most likely it will be because they have chosen not to get it. And so now there, there's, there is that. Uh, no one is obliged to... Is that a proper word? In Mexico it is. In Spanish it is obliged to get it. Uh, we need to clarify that, right? Because sometimes yeah, uh, the there's misunderstanding about it. The vaccination is a personal healthcare medical decision. Mm -hmm. And the church has validated the options of the Pfizer vaccine and the mm -hmm. Moderna vaccine. The AstraZeneca and the Johnson & Johnson have too close a tie to aborted fetal cells. Um, and since there are other readily available valid options, um, if there weren't, it would be a different story, but since there are other options, um, the Pfizer and Moderna are the morally legitimate ones. And um, so yeah, in, and they're widely available. But the church has not said, the church has said we may get them, not we have to get them. Correct. Which is, again, wise. And sometimes Prudent. people will take a statement from Pope Francis, for example, and kind of construe things in, in what he says. Um, so, anyways, what we just said, the Pfizer and Moderna is uh, medically valid, uh, morally valid, morally illicit, and um, but not required. Right. Now, of course, does the questions will come about, for example, does everybody have to be coming back to Mass as of Pentecost? And the answer is no. If, I, if my health is compromised and I can't come, I won't. But that's been the case always, right? I mean, there are homebound people that uh, we bring communion to, homebound people that can't make it to Mass, and those people are, have, you know, for as long as we have had media, are allowed to watch Mass on TV. 
and so that's going to be continuing uh, uh, that's going to continue being the case but also uh, other people like if i know that i have been in contact with someone that has coronavirus and i can be infected you know i let's say i find out thursday friday whatever and then do i go to mass on sunday no because that would be imprudent right once i found out that i have, don't have corona then you know that things change but if i'm going to put uh, other people at risk then i i, I won't uh, or, or it's you know i shouldn't go to mass and uh, th things are changing concerning the distance you know it used to be six feet now uh, even in school they're saying you know kids be it should be or, three, or can be within feet. three feet which is actually the distance between my head on this pew and my head on the next pew but you know we're going to be uh, doing more information or more thinking about how this is going to work so that we can get a great amount of people in there and uh, we are trying to develop a plan a plan for those few people because I know there there may be I mean uh, I'm not, I don't know for sure but there may be people that say well I would like a little bit more distance hopefully there's not a lot of people um, because you know we're following the recommendations that are uh, coming up uh, to see how we can accommodate that we will continue having disinfectant around um, uh, and disinfecting the pews and all those things there are you know various options for masses we have eight o'clock eight thirty I'm sorry ten thirty and we have four o'clock and then we also have five o'clock on Saturday um, in Spanish we'll have the twelve thirty we'll have on Saturday the uh, six thirty so there are various masses that we can attend um, in order to help people come to those I am thinking now and again we will give more information in the near future that we will end up the sign up uh, system and uh, do away, away with that which has been I know a headache for many many of you who are like Father Daniel very savvy on tech have been able to use it no problem but many people it's been a challenge for older people like moi and so i am glad that that's ending soon one of the reasons we did that sign up system um and plus we've had we have a number of people that call in and then they get signed up through the front desk so so we've actually offered many ways even of those who are te technologically struggling um so but we offered that um sign up system mostly because we are a parish that's pro-family and pro-child and generally the ones that have the hardest time making it on time are the the families with two three four kids you mm -hmm. know little johnny blows out his diaper right as they're trying to load the car and then now they need to you know arrive late because whatever right whereas if we had kind of like the concert ticket venue system yeah where you just like or not t the, the ticket but the line outside right we'd have all the rosary wielding grandmothers of the world out there like an hour in advance, the ones who already come and sit right. and pray in the church ahead of time, mm -hmm. and they're wonderful and beautiful and necessary in the life of the church. We just don't want to discourage families of small children who have a tougher time with logistics, which is why um, we kind of chose this this option. And so, um, but for those grandmothers that you're mentioning, that's why they could call yep. into the office. So it's been working out yeah. for everyone. Uh, to, to my knowledge, we've been one of the least dramatic parishes. <laughs> yes. on my radar at least and that's in part to you thanks to you guys and um, to the work of our good staff the work of volunteers our sacristans ushers um, who have made the accommodation and welcoming of the people um, its own new venture during the pandemic so we owe a debt of gratitude uh, to many to many who work for the church right um what am I missing besides saying that so the obligation is obviously on Sundays and the holidays of obligation the traditional holidays of obligation throughout the year which the next one will be April 
or sorry, August 15th, so we don't need to worry After about that one. After Pentecost. <laughs> we don't need to worry about that one for a while. That's a, yeah, that's a while from now. Um, but what we mean about ob Holy Days of Obligation, and I like the way that Archbishop and the bishops in general have chosen to phrase it, is the dispensation has been lifted, right? Which means the obligation has always been there. We've always had an obligation mm -hmm. to sanctify the Sabbath. So even when people come into the confessional, Father, I didn't make Mass, right? During the pandemic, not making Mass might not be the sin, especially if they're traveling or something like that. But there's still an obligation to do something, right? Either read the readings, offer an extra time of prayer, um, pray the rosary as a family, right? Do something together to sanctify the Sabbath. That obligation never went away, right? Correct. And when we say obligation, I think people feel this like, don't tell me what to do. They the you know the yeah anyways i'm not yeah. gonna take it politically so i have a friend a real good friend of mine that uh long time when he heard this is like father it's a holy day of opportunity exactly. i just loved that um paul gallagher thank you for that it's been in my heart always because that's what it is instead of ma seeing it as an obligation it's an opportunity for us to to receive jesus to be at the source and summit of the Christian faith mm -hmm. at Mass. So. And to say we want a part in the resurrection. And so Christians, ever since um, <laughs> the, the first Easter Sunday in which Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, Jesus appeared to um, John, uh, or John and Peter saw the empty tomb, Jesus appeared to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, mm -hmm. right? And explained the scriptures to them. And it says their hearts were opened not when Jesus was giving the very first Bible study, right? Not when he was standing there in the midst of them, but as they entered into the liturgy, they recognized him in the breaking of the bread, right? And there's something so powerful in that, that, that Jesus reveals himself while at the same time he's hidden within that first community of, of uh, those disciples in the road to Emmaus. And then Christians ever since have gathered every Sunday, the first day of the week, so as to give glory and praise to God and to say, I want a part of that resurrection. Right. Right. Um, great. And, and so the dispensation has been lifted. The obligation's always been there, right? The dispensation is being lifted at Pentecost, which means those who are able to come to Mass, and you know who you are, um, need to start coming back to Mass. Right simple as that but yeah. yes we will be sending more information on on all of this but everybody needs to know now so that we can start preparing there are people like me that <coughs> were waiting to get the vaccine at some point and at some point we had to say okay you know i'm ready to get the vaccine so if you were on the fence uh this would be the perfect time to to start on that Great. Uh, the next thing, it's uh, uh, it's tied to a sad story, of course, that uh, Father Daniel, Father Daniel is leaving us. Uh, you know, Father Daniel does his shakes. You know about those shakes? They're <laughs> they're famous, and he uh, does them on a on a great blender that we have uh, gifted to us by a beautiful lady in Thornton um, and and he leaves the blender oftentimes on the sink uh, in the sink in the sink uh, without being fully washed ha halfway cleaned. and I, I love like a, like a good roommate <laughs> for some reason because I love that blender I love washing that blender so today as I was washing it I'm like darn it can't he come all the way from Denver to <laughs> use this darn blender and be here at the house every Sunday? Or anyway, it's it's just there's going to be a uh, period of grieving that unfortunately begins now, and uh, oh, we're gonna miss him so much. But don't tell him that because uh, you know he'll probably get a big head. Uh, so I thought we would talk a little bit about the fact that this happens is not just to us and of course everybody knows that this happens if you've been Catholic you know for a few years at least you know that this happens in every parish 
and it's a painful thing. Um, now it's a painful thing for the community. Uh, when the pastor moves uh, or when the vicar moves and the community uh, you know thinks okay it's painful for us because they're constantly moving the priests now think of how painful it is for the priest and you know I, I'm not saying you know feel sorry for ourselves no I'm just trying to explain this fortunately this is not me moving so I can talk about this openly think how it is for the priest the community stays, your family stays, your whole community stays, your church, your beautiful uh, uh, building stays, everything stays. The priest leaves and takes no one with him. And it is such a shocking and, and, and painful experience for the priest, uh, 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 you know, again, I, I can say, even more than it is for the community for for those reasons that I explained and uh, that is just uh, from the human perspective the experience some of the reasons why uh, the bishops move priests around at least some of the reasons that I've heard are uh, imagine this you know I'm Father Umberto the worst priest that has ever been ordained and then I am given to St. John the Baptist and I am there until I die how difficult would it be for the community to have to live through that for the rest of their life now I'm not I, I, and I, it's not about uh, we're not trying good to throw one, anyone under the bus exactly how good someone is or s how bad someone yeah. is but um, each priest has gifts and weaknesses yes. and his sins. Weaknesses, thank you, yes. Um, but again, you know, uh, we have experienced the giftedness, for example, of, of, of Father Daniel. And, uh, you know, we have experienced uh, weakness of other priests and, and including, you know, our weaknesses. And so, so as to balance the gifts all around the archdiocese is... You know, that's one of the main reasons that they move us around. Now, there's a community that will enjoy his gifts. Now, uh, I, again, I can say this because it's not about me. This community, um, I'll come and visit y'all uh, in a while because I'll visit uh, Father Daniel too. This community will not want him. And it, I'm not talking about, about the community. They will not want him for this reason their dad their father that has been there for so many years walking with them uh, nurturing them protecting them loving them is going to be gone and so they want their father and someone else comes in claiming that now he's their father that's the reason why i'm saying they will not want him so it's it's a very difficult thing uh, and it's going to be a very difficult thing for Father. So everyone at St. John's, please, let's get on our knees, um, you know, and, and pray for him. Uh, and for that beautiful community that he is going to. Um, I, I hear that they're pretty active. It, this is a huge community. So um, y'all will be blessed, even though, you know, many of you might not see it for a while. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you keep going because I'm just gonna shut up and eat my cereal. Yeah, um, when a priest is ordained, he goes into his ordination, and before he places his hands in the bishop's hands and says, "I promise respect and obedience to you and to your successors," even before he does that, like makes a gift of himself. He lies prostrate on the ground, which means face down, which is an act of, of a symbolic act of total self-emptying, which, which is to say, my priesthood is not about me, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not, it's, I'm not the man, right? It's, right? it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And as I've said in all the mass announcements, anything good that, that has happened through my priesthood, that's not through me, that's through Jesus in me, because there's so Amen. many reasons why I never should have been a priest. There's so many reasons why um, 
why it's just it's and it's a, it's an absurd blessing how the Lord works powerfully through us, right? Wow. And um, and it's not it's not me. It's Jesus in me. And Jesus uh, saved me. He wanted me for his own. And so I think of that moment in which I laid down and said, Lord, I give you my life. And then I went to the bishop and say, I give you, I give Jesus my life concretely in your office, Archbishop. And I place my hands and then later he consecrates them. He gives me power to call upon the presence of God into the host, into the precious blood, uh, into this, into the confessional. And so my life has always belonged to the church, but not just the Church of John the Baptist, the Church of Northern Colorado, right? I belong to this archdiocese, 130 something parishes. And so when the bishop says we have a need here, right? Because the community that I'm going to minister to, that pastor is going to take the place of a priest who's retiring. And so every year there's kind of holes that need to be filled there's there's um yeah and so um so the priest is not his own the priest belongs to jesus the priest belongs to the bishop the priest belongs to the church at large and in that we all belong to one another as we draw closer to christ and so he alone has the power to give us resurrection and as i also said in my um announcements like you think coffee and donuts is great after mass on earth like way to coffee and donuts in heaven, <laughs> right? Which is exactly why we mm. gave our lives as priests, not for coffee and donuts, per se, right. but to bring as many souls into heaven, right, into the eternal community of God's love. And so uh, it's with this interspersed mixture of sadness and joy that I will be in June departing from here uh, and, and taking up my new home and meeting my new parishioners in Denver. Yes, we will be loving them uh, here at St. John the Baptist and, and, and praying for them and for you. And uh, I think that, I don't want to say much more yeah. about that. Because again, uh, the process of uh, grieving begins. Let's uh, grieve with dignity and, and again, continue loving Father, uh, not just until he leaves, but for the rest of our lives, for the impact that he has made and is making in our, in our community, in our lives, in my very own life. I can say that proudly. Mm. And the Lord says, blessed are they who mourn, for they should be comforted. And I think it's not just the sorrow that's the blessing. It's the sorrow is because we've loved, and having loved is what gives the blessing. Right? Amen. So we right. love you guys. Love you. Bye.